this week on Scam School, we predict the future and you get to participate. These tasty free beers courtesy of Netflix. Welcome to the show that Sorcerer Certified by the Secret Society of Sexy Shaman. Yes, it's a real society. Scam School, the only show dedicated to social engineering at the bar and on the street. Hello, beautiful people. I'm Brian Brushwood. And this week, all the way from England, we get a mathematical miracle that's going to blow your mind and predict the future. <laughs> all right. JR and Wayne, we're going to try something that I don't think we've ever done on Scam School before. Okay. We're going to try to do a trick for you guys simultaneously and the entire home viewing audience, right? But the first thing we need to do is have you guys thoroughly shuffle that deck of cards. Make sure you're absolutely certain that they're all... Oh, you're going to split the job. I like that. That's good. That's good randomness. That's double blind technology. Double blind. There we go. I'm going to deal all these out. Perfect. Hey, there we go. Now it looks all pretty. So here's what we got. We got a snake going all the way down of all the cards. And they are in the order that you decided they were going to be. This is when I'm going to make my prediction. Get ready, sir. There's like a weird intensity going on right now. You've set up the entire gaming board. Now you get to make your first choice. You can choose any of these guys in the top line on top. And this goes for the folks at home as well. Pick any of these as your starting point. And what you're going to do is you're going to kind of hop on down the line using a simple set of rules. Whatever number you start on, you're going to move that many forward. Whatever you land on, you move that many forward again. So in other words, they all have to be numbers, right? Okay. If it's not a number card, I guess we'll do, let's say, five for the face cards. And if it's a joker, we'll say one. But those are arbitrary. We could change all those if we want. So for example, if you were to start with this two, you would go one, two, and then you'd have to go three, right? But if you started with this two, you'd go one, two. And then you would keep on going all the way down. Now obviously, you could end on any of those down at the bottom. For example, if you landed on that 10 right there, then you would be out of moves because you couldn't go 10. Once you get to the end, that's your final number. Make sense? Here's what I want you guys to do though. I want you guys to secretly, each of you choose your own <laughs> starting number, all right? And you don't have to hide it necessarily, but just, just in your mind, you got one of those you want to start with? Uh, yeah. And what about you? You got one you want to start with? One. All right, hopefully by now everyone at home has one they're going to start with as well. It's a bit of a mental exercise, and in fact, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a moment to count through it. And of course, if you want extra time at home, you can just pause the video. You're both thinking of your own special card that you ended up on, right? Yes. Hopefully the folks at home are doing it as well. On the count of three, I want both of you to tell me which one, what card you ended up on. Ready? Three, two, one. Eight, eight of, of clubs. clubs. Both of you picked the eight of clubs, yeah. which was exactly my prediction from the beginning. <laughs> and hopefully everybody at home picked the eight of clubs too. This is amazing. You guys shuffled the card. There's no sleight of hand. I'll explain exactly how this works. But first, we got to take a quick break. Now toast me. All right, before we get the secret on this one, I want to spark a debate with both you guys and everybody watching, putting comments down below. The question is, what is the greatest movie that's got scams, cons, or magic in it? And I don't mean like wizard magic, I mean like <laughs> magic. Not that there's anything wrong with wizard magic. The prestige. The prestige is pretty freaking good. Like, it, it hooks you, you're watching it, and all of a sudden it's just like, well, bam, the whole thing is not what you thought the entire time. That's right, plus David Bowie. David Bowie. Uh, and, and Christopher Nolan. Yes, go. The Illusionist. The Illusionist? Yeah. Did you, uh, see, now I always thought like, I don't know why movies always come out like in pairs. Like when one person does body swapping movies, you have to have eight of them all at once. But I guess those two came out at the same time. I have a confession to make. I never watched all of The Illusionist. Was it, was it good? <laughs> yeah, it was I, I, always, I always looked at it like the wimpier cousin of The Prestige. <laughs> I love The Prestige, like crazy. I also would have accepted like, uh, what, House of Games, The Spanish Prisoner, Paper Moon, The Sting. But now I get to reveal my secret reason for bringing up this debate. And hopefully everyone's already typing down on their picks. You can watch a whole bunch of these, title subject to availability, at netflix.com slash scam school. They're going to sponsor the show forever. If you're thinking about getting Netflix, because everyone knows how great it is. You can play it on your PS3, your Wii, your PS4. 
the PS5 when it comes out, I'm sure. Everything you want available for instant streaming. I just got done watching season two of House of Cards. Freaking epic, right? Holy so enjoy that, right? <laughs> yes. Anyway, but if you go to Netflix.com slash ScanSchool, you can get 30 days free, watch all the movies you want, and then say backseas. They won't charge you or nothing, and we'll get credit for you going up and showing that. So uh, how about that? Here, pretend to toast me since I'm the only one with drinks. <laughs> there we go. This is one of the most amazing, astonishing things to me because I genuinely did not know how this was going to turn out. You guys truly shuffled all the cards. You guys dealt it out. You picked your own beginning cards. I did a couple of things that barely cheated the odds in my favor. And let me make it very clear. This might not always work, but the odds are stacked incredibly in favor of it working not just for one person, but for every single person in the room that you perform it for. This was sent over to me by Dr. James Grime, and it's called Kruskal's Count. It's a mathematical concept that says no matter how you shuffle up the cards, no matter which card you start on, the odds are that sooner or later, everybody ends up on the same track from that point forward. And you can kind of see it here. For example, there's no difference between picking an ace and picking a 10, because the moment you pick an ace, it's gonna guide you to the 10. And you can kind of see it here as well. If you pick this two, it would take you two forward to this three, which would go one, two, three, and you'd end up on this nine. But if you pick this two, you'd go one, two forward, and then this two would put you on the same nine. Once you're in the groove, you're stuck in the groove all the way down. According to the paper I read by James Grind, he said in a randomly shuffled deck, if you pick any one of the first 10 cards, the odds are 86% that whichever of those cards you pick will match the one that the magician did. Because when you're laying these cards out, you'll notice I had plenty of time. It takes so long to deal out all these cards that I just picked the very first one, happened to be an ace, and from there I just started counting one and ended on the 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Then from there I was like nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I kept on going all the way down so the odds are with a fair deck 86% that it's gonna work whatever the first card is or whichever random one the magician picks I cheated the odds in my favor a little bit number one I only let you choose from the first seven cards here now this worked out on this table because that was a natural top row for me to set up and that's why you know I could have had this be eight, but I didn't know what the cards were gonna be. I was sort of relying on luck. Second of all, I used the jokers as a one, and I left them in the deck, which gives you a couple more iterations to have it work. I believe once you use two decks, the odds go like into the high 90%. I'd have to double check my numbers on that. So if I was just doing the trick one-on-one -on -one as a prediction effect, I would already have a little better than 86% chance of being right. But I went for the big prize by trying to get every single person watching to pick the exact same one. Now the odds of that are considerably lower. They're only 60%. We just happen to get lucky in this case. When that happens though, every single card, no matter what they pick, has a 100% chance of always ending up on the same one at the end. Any questions about it? If you uh, change the face value of, of the uh, face cards like yeah. to 10, does it decrease your chances or? Very, very much so because, because the larger the face card value is, the fewer chances you have to skip in the groove. That's why I intentionally picked a lower number for that. So that it increases kind of the number of at-bats before you would hit the same groove. So making something like a three would make it a little more statistically oh my probable. God, yes, but, but it also would be a little more fishy, wouldn't yeah. it, right? Now you could do something like say, maybe jacks are one, queens are two, kings are three. At least that has kind of a reason to it. But again, <laughs> that's... Well, that's, that becomes complicated to keep in your head too. Yeah, well, yeah. And, and well, like at that point, why don't you have 11, 12, and 13, right? right? You can present this any way you want. I did it as a prediction effect and kind of as a group uh, remote presentation thing. But the key moments are, as you deal the cards out, just make sure I pick the very first one, you can pick any other random one, and just figure out what one comes at the end, and then you know in advance. One of you guys, one of you guys perform it for me. Who's gonna do it? I'll do it. <laughs> oh, JR, yeah. All right, here, let's get rid of all these. Scoop up all your cards, sir. All right, JR. So I guess what? First you let me shuffle the cards, right? I'm gonna shuffle the first. Yeah. Oh, I see, you don't trust yeah. my magic hands. <laughs> all right, here we go. They're totally shuffled. I'm convinced, sir. You wanna, you wanna come I, to that? I think right. I'm good. Right. So as you're dealing out the cards, in your mind, I want you to already start doing the, the count. So in this case, an ace, so you're thinking one. Now you're gonna think nine. And you can feel yourself speeding up here. So in this case, you ended up on a 10, right? Which means very likely 10 will be the last one. 10 of clubs would be the last one in this one, right? So you would write your prediction. You would write 10 of clubs. And now let's see if uh, let's see if we got lucky again. Here, there's your prediction I wrote for you. 
<laughs> Just for grins, you pick one, I'll pick one. I'll, I'll go ahead and start with this uh, queen here. Which one are you doing? Three. All right, let's go. Let's both see it where we end up. One, two, three, four, five. A few moments later. Five. Aha! See, this is good. So in this case, the way it got dealt out here, in this case, it worked for me. So your prediction would have been right, but it would not have been right for you. So this is when you're performing for more than one person. What I do is say, make your prediction. And if you want to hedge your bet, then also on another napkin beforehand, maybe write down, you know, two names and you can decide which one to turn over. Or you can say like which one, and you can watch as people go through it and then they get off track. You're like, oh, you picked uh, that one. Well, apparently I only predicted it for you. Boom. But again, this is a statistically in your favor, but not guaranteed. And I'm glad it actually worked <laughs> out that way. And I'm glad it worked out for everyone at home. Thanks so much, guys. That was freaking awesome. And thanks to fun. James Grime for his amazing Singing Banana channel. He's the awesome. Best. First and foremost, we have to give a huge thanks to one of our oldest and best friends of Scam School. James Grime of Cambridge University sent this over. Make sure to check out his channel at Singing Banana. That's youtube.com slash singing banana. In fact, no lie, if you search for the Crucial count, his paper is one of the first things that turns up anywhere on it, and it's fascinating. Go ahead and dive in on the mathematics. You will not be disappointed. By the way, send me your favorite bar scams at brian at And don't forget that you can get all kinds of badass decks of cards and other stuff at scamstuff.com. It's gear for the modern rogue. Remember, scam school is about what you do at the bar. Scam stuff is about what you bring to the bar. Don't forget to join us next week because we're going to learn to do something productive with our lives. <laughs> I couldn't even say that with a straight face. <laughs> There we go. So that's double blind technology.